Hey, everybody. Let's welcome the winner of Live Golf Chicago 2024 and our season-long individual champion, the captain of Legion 13, John Rahm. Welcome, John. <laughs> John, let's first talk about your round today. Uh, you fired off a 66. Um, you know, you won the tournament, ended up winning the tournament by uh, three points, 11 under total for the week. You really came in clutch to take this home. Joaquin put in a, an effort to, to catch you. And the way that it was, if he would have been ahead of you, you wouldn't have won the season-long championship. Tell me about how important today was for you and how much of a grind it was over every shot to get here. It was, uh, it was definitely a, a stressful day, right? But that pressure is... It's a privilege that only two of us had today. Uh, and, and that's kind of why I said yesterday I wanted to focus on, on winning the tournament, right? Because I knew if I won the tournament, there would be no doubt I will be the individual champion as well. And you kind of want to go out with, with a win, right? That would be, be nice to – would have been very nice to get the second win. It feels amazing to get that second win in my first season. So I focused on that. And it's not easy when Huaco starts birdie par birdie and, you know, I kind of stressed for parts in the first two holes, uh, not really being in position either on the first shot or the second shot. But great drive on three, made birdie, great par on four, and kind of got my round going, right? Uh, felt really comfortable all day. And once it got windy, because towards the back nine, the wind picked up, it got difficult. I thought it played to my advantage because that would make birdies more difficult. And I was hitting it so well that felt like I could make pars and even give myself birdie chances. Uh, little did I know that 11 through 13, he was going to get a little a little iffy. A uh, couple wind gusts, shots that I didn't feel like they were that bad and ended up in difficult situations. I made three great par saves and, you know, off I went for the towards the end of the round. Um, if I had to give myself anything towards any any critique for the day was maybe not making that birdie pot on 14. Um, the, the most difficult thing, which is hitting the green on two, hit a good first pot and not making that five footer uh, definitely hurt. But luckily, I made the birdie pot on 17, which felt a lot better than I think making the one on 14 would have. So you and Waka were not in the same group today. You told us yesterday you're a big leaderboard watcher. How much were you eyeing that leaderboard today? Oh, all day. All day. Uh, usually you can hear cheers and you know what's going on. So when I wasn't hearing anything crazy, I knew that obviously nothing like that was happening, which, which helps. Uh, it was, uh, if I'm ever not going to have him in my group, it was nice to, to not hear the good golf ahead, right? And, and still be playing good golf myself. So yeah, it was, um, it was very enjoyable. It was very enjoyable. I mean, at one point, I also had to worry about Terrell with the, with the start he had, and Sergio was playing great golf. Uh, it could have been a very different day, how, had a couple of putts for Sergio falling, but it's just not an easy golf course out there. It's very difficult to hit it close and very difficult to make those putts. So you finished the season first, second, first in order to secure the season-long individual championship. Do you think we can associate your name with the word clutch? <laughs> <laughs> well... I was in clutch at Greenbrier, and I was in clutch a lot of other parts during the season, but I'm glad I, I was today, right? Uh, there's a, a, lot of, a lot feeding to, into making this day very special for me, um, playing with Sergio and, and Brooks. You know, last time we played together was Sunday of Valderrama. Sergio won. Uh, last time I played with Brooks, he beat me. So it was definitely... Uh, a pairing that motivated me a lot to to hopefully have my best, and, and I'm glad I did. Uh, I'm on Huaco, obviously, playing great in front of us, and I would say to to have the f not only whoever finished first and second this week, but the top three spots for the individual season standings be three Hispanic players, right? Two from Spain, one Chile. Uh, I think it's also very important in what can the impact it can have culturally for uh, for Latin America and Spain. So I think that's another thought to, to have out there for all of us to be proud of. How unique is it that the first, second, and third podium at Chicago also ended up being first, second, third for, for season-long standings? Yeah, I mean, it, it's... 
you can't really script it that much better, <laughs> right? Uh, I think it would have been very underwhelming if me and Joaco finished 21st and 22nd. So the fact that we come out and we both play good and, and you have the story to tell and and it comes down to basically the last few holes. Uh, I think it, it's it's also more exciting for whoever wins, but it's a lot more exciting for, I would say, for the viewers out there to, you know, to to watch good golf while, while we're competing for the big championship. You have got that ring on. And tell us about the ring, John. <laughs> uh, it doesn't fit right now. <laughs> it's too big for my pinky and too small for the other fingers, but... <laughs> no, it's all good. I, 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 I do have sausage fingers, so... Uh, <laughs> it's... Uh, <laughs> we were trying to do the QR code thing that, that Ben told me about with this a little bit too much bling <laughs> bothering the camera. Um, it's really special. Uh, I have had a ring before for winning Pac-12 championships, and, and that was special to, for some reason, to think of the ring rather than a trophy. In a weird way, it makes it a little bit more, right? Maybe because I associated the football and basketball and, and, and U.S. events. Uh, I feel like I'm that Americanized at this point. And <laughs> I don't know, it's special. I feel like in a weird sense, you're part of a select group that get to have a championship ring, which is not a possibility in sports. But in itself, I think it's just being able to wear what it represents, right? I think uh, seeing it firsthand right away as soon as you finish what, what this means is, is very special. So just taking a moment to reflect now. You can exhale. You did it. You took it home. Can you just reflect on the season for us? I mean, thinking back all the way back to when I first met you in New York when we signed you and everything that's transpired since then, just take it all in for us and give us uh, some reflections. It's been, it's been, a, I wouldn't say bumpy road, but definitely windy. Uh, you know, made the decision to, to join Live Golf, fully confident that. I can make an impact and you know you deal with the emotions of that decision the the impact on the media good and bad and then going out to to the season trying to to win right trying to get a team together a message of of the team across and then get the those winning moments and start the year off great 17t in Mayakoba tie for the lead and absolutely ruined it completely in the last two holes and that was my start of the of live golf season but you know to keep fighting keep putting myself in position having chances to win um, it was great, but there was a before and after between Singapore and Houston when I changed that driver shaft uh, to something that I worked a little bit better with my current swing speed and and uh, made me not compensate as much. Kind of felt better, a, a more natural swing, easier for my for myself to hit the fade, and and that's when I saw the big difference. From Nashville on, my level of golf was a little bit higher more comfortable where I didn't feel like I had to try so much and at that point is when I felt that the win was almost at that point just a matter of time and getting it done at JCB was incredible. Amongst all that, the, the personal situation with, with Kelly's uh, issues in the pregnancy it's, it's something that, you know, from pretty much April on wasn't easy at all. Uh, having to be gone in, in Europe for a month while she was dealing with that and away from family wasn't easy and to now come towards the end, where we're almost can almost feel the what, what it's gonna feel like to to hold our baby girl and and get the second win in the championship done is it almost feels like it's too good to be true right after the year that we've had so uh, can't wait to go home in that sense and and be able to give him a hug today. And just now that you've had a year out on live golf and had the full live golf experience, um, just would love to get your perspective um, on this league and everything you've experienced this year out here? You know, for anybody out there that's wondering, it is a little bit different experience than, than any other tour out there, but it is closer experience to pretty much any other sport out there, right? Uh, as a captain, I was curious to see how different the dynamics were going to be, of maybe not really being in charge of three players, but being who they maybe went to for advice. Uh, Maybe not so terrible since he's uh, obviously a fantastic player, but Kieran and Caleb being younger and, and maybe less experienced, uh, showing them the way and, and just how certain things in professional golf at the highest level works was something that I didn't know how I was going to handle. Turns out I, I like 
given advice, uh, and hopefully it was it was good advice. Um, but when it comes to golf, I I thoroughly enjoyed it. Being able to go to to Adelaide, Hong Kong, Singapore, all those places in Asia and and, and Australia was quite unique and so much fun. I hadn't played in that part of the world, and to see the crowd, the love they had for us, and the support for the game was absolutely heartwarming just to be able to be a part of that. And even, even weeks like this one in the U.S., Nashville, the Rao, they were all incredible. So it's, uh, I think this league has gotten a lot of, uh, quite a bit of a bad rap without people having experienced it. They've been too quick to judge. And I think the vast majority of them would ex absolutely love spending a day out here. Uh, most people that don't like the music, the second they come, they get over it. It's part of the atmosphere, like in many other sports. And uh, it's... As a player and as a family man, it was, it's been a fantastic experience for myself and my family the times that they've been able to come. So I uh, can't wait to get next, well, this season finished next week, but get thinking about next year and, and seeing some different destinations. And last one from me. So I want you to enjoy this moment of the win. But the work's not over yet. You can still take home the team championship next week in Dallas. So. Are you going to start shifting your mindset after enjoying this for a moment to see how you can dominate in Dallas? It's very nice that I'm being able being able to have that that bye day to go home. Uh, we don't play till Saturday, so we can have the luxury of going home Monday and flying Tuesday afternoon. So I think that having a, that bit of a break, being able to take the kids to school tomorrow morning, pick them up and be with them, is going to be a nice before and after between this one and next week. Uh, and maybe even get to celebrate a little bit with uh, with some friends uh, and just enjoy what, what I've accomplished this week. Uh, be a nice way to shift the mind in, into what we need to accomplish next week. Excellent. Congratulations, John. Thank you. Mike, over there. So, John, you've won majors. You've won tournaments all over the world, Ryder Cups. What, what does a season-long championship mean to you? It's a different accomplishment because it's not just one week, right? Uh, can't really compare anything to majors, right, uh, and, and the sport that we live in. But having able to being able to win the season-long race in two out of the three big leagues and having almost done it on the PGA Tour as well, it's a, it's a different feeling, right? Just being able to to culminate all the good golf all season, and especially doing it by winning individually today, I think is what makes it so much more special, right? Knowing that I had to win and getting it done is, is something to really be proud of and something to reflect on. And I always, when I get to a point like this, I always think about the, the amount of work that a lot of people have to put in for me to get to this position, right? And how thankful I am for everybody around on my team. I mean, it all starts with my wife because without her support, it wouldn't be the same, right? But from Jeff, our team manager, and my personal manager, swing coach Jeff, my trainer Spencer, my physio Harry, who's on the road, and then the one I see at home, Jimmy, uh, friends like Sunil, mental coaches uh, like uh, Brett McCabe and Joseba that I see in Spain. I mean, it's a large team just to help me perform at the level I want. Uh, somebody that I haven't mentioned many times that I work with physically, Andy Galpin, Dr. Andy Galpin, who I've seen a big change in how my body responds since I've started working with them. So, Andy, thank you. <laughs> Don't even know if you'll see this, but um, it's it makes me really happy to have such a good core group of people around me, and uh, it's very special to be able to to have this moment and, and be able to share with them in the future. So, the season-long title, two tournament wins, top tens in every tournament you finished. Would you say the season? exceeded your expectations? Did it meet your expectations? I accomplished the goal, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say it, uh, it exceeded my expectations because I had a few other chances to win, mm -hmm. right? Uh, with Greenbrier and Mayakoba being the two closest, but it definitely met what I expected. And uh, I could say maybe it will exceed the expectations if we get the win done next Sunday. And uh, I did want to ask you about your, your play this week. You, you had one bogey in the first round and obviously went bogey free this weekend. Given the course, how impressive is that in your mind? 
honestly, when we played the practice rounds and knowing how firm it was going to be, I didn't think that would be nearly a possibility. So uh, it's a nice little stat to have and, and, and really personally admire myself because very rarely am I praised for my short game. And I can, uh, I think my ball striking can take away from that. And I can positively say that my short game definitely won me the tournament this week. Some of the up and downs that I made and even making some of those six footers like the one on 12 mm -hmm. and 11 is, is what kept the day going, right? So I think uh, the short game this week definitely is what shined through. I was going to ask you about the the par saves. Do you, do you feel like that was kind of the key point or was it 17 that gave you a little bit of space? Um, well, it's a key change on that 10, 11, 12, I think it was the where things could have gone wrong, and I saved it, right? Uh, it's almost impossible to play a final round flawlessly in a golf course like this, especially with that green on 12. You're either five feet for birdie or in a disaster zone hoping to make par. So it's it's tough. And uh, with the wind picking up, it made it a little bit more difficult. And that's where I feel like I maintained. Luckily, nobody made birdies mm -hmm. in all those holes. and. I could maybe get back to attacking on 13 through 15, right? So uh, even though I made a, a little bit of a, a mess of, not a mess, but made it a lot more difficult on myself on 13. But that stretch right there, not dropping a shot in any of those was fine. Even the three putt on 14, as much as it bothers me, is not a par five that a lot of people are probably birdie in today and just the conditions they were, right? So I knew a five wouldn't kill me. You took driver at 15. In your mind, was there was that a risk at all? Uh, they seem to think so a little bit on TV. Never. Nah. With being in off the left, I knew I could just be aggressive and hit a fade. If I were faded, I'm in the bunker or on the upslope in the rough. Plenty of green to work with. If I hit a good one, I knew I could put it on the green or be just short where the chip was the easiest, right? Mm -hmm. And then seeing Sergio's three wood. I mean, his three wood got nearly up there, so. If I hit a three wood and live myself on the downhill in the fairway, it's not the easiest pitch shot into a firm green. So I thought the closest, the better. And uh, had a heck of a tee shot. If that ball goes a little bit higher, like I intended, could have had a good chance of staying on the green. But being just short in the rough was, was a perfect spot. And gave myself a great great look from eight feet up the hill. Just, just wasn't able to convert it. And I asked you this question there earlier this week, and you said you wanted to kind of wait until Sunday. But does this? change your perception of the season or what you did today? It doesn't change the perception, but it just confirms a lot of what I thought and, and what I've been doing really well. Uh, I feel like every time I've been able to win is uh, it's, it's just a confirmation of the job well done, right? And, and again, like I keep saying, a lot to be really proud of personally. Okay, over here, John. Uh, you already answered one of my questions about the drive uh, on 15, but... Was that uh, really a questionable thing? Like, I mean, I'm not playing the course, so I don't, <laughs> I don't, know, I don't I, know how tight it is up there, so, yeah. I was thinking birdie. I didn't... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, I want to talk about 17 as well. What did you hit off the tee there on 17? Eight iron. Okay. So, um, at that point, how challenging is it to not shift into protection mode and, and still go after things and still play normal. Um, like you said, sometimes late in rounds this year, it hasn't quite gone your way. So um, could you talk about the, the mental challenge there? Yeah. I mean, even that back nine, can I ask my caddy, Adam? Like, I I hit the shots the way I wanted to. We just had a few gusts, like on, on 11 and 12, we had wind gusts to end up as short as they did. Uh, um, weird wind situation on 13 where the ball fell right instead of left because it was hammering down right of, uh, of the right. Um, and even on 16, I mean, we're going to the firm green and and having very tight margins. It's almost like you need to be aggressive to conservative spots, right? And even 16, I thought I nailed it, and it was just short. So going to 17 and seeing both of them not hit a good shot kind of not opened my eyes, but made me realize what shot I had to hit, which was clearly started further right than you think, because that wind is whipping. And then... Uh, just trust your number. Um, we had to trust that the wind wasn't hurting. And you know, if a, a certain shot with the eight iron is 155 meters, hit it perfect, landed 153, and ended up in the perfect spot. I mean, if there was a place, to, a 
If somebody told you where to place it on that green, 10 feet away, I think everybody would go exactly where my ball ended up, right? I mean, left pitch, putt up the hill. Uh, and what felt best was hitting the best part of the entire week on that hole. I mean, I've, to feel that good a stroke under pressure and see that ball going that center of the hole was about as satisfying as, as golf can get. And I don't know if you've talked about the driver shaft thing, the change uh, midseason. Could you elaborate a little bit more about what you did there and, and how you feel about the driver since then? Well, I've drove it much better. Um, so maybe stats-wise, it doesn't show much of a difference, but there was a lot of weeks where I would hit it, I would make a good swing, and the ball would start left and not cut. And that was the issue. I thought it was my swing, and finally I talked to somebody at Callaway, and, and Adam and my swing coach Dave, and we all thought maybe we should visit or reconsider a new driver shaft. And went to uh, ECPC in Callaway in San Diego, the headquarters, tried a bunch, and the second I hit this one, it was instantly, okay, this is different, this is better. And it's kind of where I got back to not manipulating the shot to make it fade and seeing that ball start on a on certain line and trajectory, right? Because while I was compensating my swing to, to try to hit fairways, it was bleeding into the rest of my game. And it was getting to a point where I was making other good swings and still feeling like they were good swings and they were going straight left, which is very unusual for me. And uh, that slowly started to come back with, with that shaft. And that was, yeah, in Nashville, I saw a big difference. Not perfect, but a big difference. And, and that's when I thought toward the rest of the season, okay, this is more familiar territory, more to what I, how I usually hit it, and almost not really thought it, but almost thought that it was basically a matter of time till I was going to give myself a good chance to win. Okay, yeah, uh, John, the foot injury that kept you out of the U.S. Open, how, much, how long did it take you to come back from that and feel like you were 100% back out here on the tour? Uh, yeah, it was odd because we had a couple of weeks off at home where I couldn't do much, and Houston couldn't do much, U.S. Open week didn't do anything at all. Uh, and it was it's a weird diagnosis, right, from what we thought it was to what ended up being. And that, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday of the U.S. Open when they finally opened up the wound and showed me what it was, it was uh, pretty clear, right? So a lot of work to make sure the infection was gone and from then on to avoid what, what happened. Um, it really didn't take me that long to get back into, into shape. Uh, in a weird way, it was kind of a nice reset from not having played that great, maybe on, oh, to my expectations earlier on the year, and then uh, took it as a, as a weird, you know, just rest time to, to be at home, uh, to be with the family, to mentally reset and get ready for the end of the year, and, and that's what I did, and ended up working really, really well. Uh, I kind of... The idea really, I really felt like I was back in Valderrama because I played really good that week, hit it fantastic. Maybe didn't make as many putts as I would have liked, but mm -hmm. hit it really, really well and finished in a, in a good top 10. And that's what made the rest of the year be what it is. Mm -hmm. Based on the, uh, you talked about the crowds you saw in other parts of the world. Based on the fan support you saw here, how much would you like to be back in Chicago at Live Golf next year? I have a pretty good track record in Chicago, so I'm always going to be happy to come back. Uh, the, the, I think played Olympic Fields twice, won once. Played at Medina. I think I finished top five. Played at Conway Farms. Definitely top ten. I don't know if it was top five or not. And came here and won. So, yeah, I would <laughs> I would encourage to come back to Chicago because I definitely uh, definitely like coming here and, and playing golf in the city. We we'll go to Sean Zach over there. I'm sure you're trying to get on a plane soon, so. We can make it quick, but a couple. Did you have uh, champagne shot into your nose during the celebration? <laughs> the what? The, did did champagne shoot into your nose during the celebration? It yes. Was, how do, how does that feel? Not good. <laughs> I told Taro not to do it again. He did it again on the podium. So, <laughs> I mean, you you got to breathe, right? So it was at one point when I thought the big bulk was gone and his bottle still kept going. I tried to breathe and it went right on my nose. Uh, today and yesterday, you you mentioned enjoying uh, giving advice to teammates of yours, and that is a part of the captaincy that you didn't necessarily know about yourself, that you enjoy giving advice. Is there a part of this season where that kind of hit you or, or some advice that you gave to someone that kind of dawned on you? Uh, no, I think it's a reflection throughout the year. Um, 
It's funny, when I finished my college career, the one regret I had is not speaking up more, right? So not sharing my thoughts when I thought somebody was doing something wrong. And uh, it's definitely something that I've had in mind this year when I thought I needed to speak up to do so. Maybe obviously try to be con constructive, um, try to make him understand what I'm thinking, but definitely speak up when I thought somebody was doing something iffy. And uh, I think, I hope that I've done a good job. Uh, I don't know if my teammates agree or not, but uh, it's not always easy to get something through the skull of a professional golfer, because I know myself, I'm very hard-headed. And most of us, in, in general, because this sport drives me absolutely nuts, are like that. So you got to pick your spots and get to know your teammates before you know how to relay that message, right? So, uh, but yeah, there's something that I don't know why I enjoy. It's just the feeling of helping somebody. It's just, it's just a nice feeling to have. And then last thing is you, you finish the season top 10 in every event that you finish out here. To us, we see T6, 3, 1, 2, and they look a lot like just singular results. But when you accomplish that, does it feel different to you than it probably does when we look at it? It's very nice early on, but then as the weeks go by, it's almost like a little bit of pressure, right? Uh, that adds on to keep it going. Uh, remember in Valderrama on that third hole, I ran my 30 foot or six feet by and I was fully aware that that part was to stay in the top 10. So uh, put myself a little bit under more pressure. And, and it's something that matters. Uh, top 10 percentage, in my mind, absolutely matters. I want to finish as high as I can and you know, if at the end of my career they can say, oh, John finished top 10 X amount of time, X percentage of the time is, is, is incredible. Uh, I pride myself that throughout most of my pro career, I think I've had a top 10 percentage of around 50%. And yeah, it's, it's an honor to be able to say that. And it's something that I work for because it matters. Uh, I fight till the end. Every shot matters the most to me. And I think that kind of shows that, right? Uh, and I definitely think about it throughout the year. It's something that it, it means a lot to be able to say that. Okay, Bob Herrick. John, I realize this is down the list of priorities at this point, but when you left here on Wednesday, the whole Ryder Cup thing seemed, and Spanish Open seemed a little up in the air to us uh, based on what you said. Obviously, uh, you guys decided to, to, uh, you know, to, to challenge the, the penalties. Um, was that hit or, you know, kind of com hit or miss, wh whether you were going to do that? Was that, was, were you, were you, did you take that decision to the last minute? And was, when, you, when, when you left here, was there a chance that you were not going to appeal? Uh, I think when I left, because I did my media, was it Wednesday? Correct, yeah. Yeah. And, and it, they, they had to know by Thursday morning. Yeah, we sent the email. I think it was at 5 Thursday morning. I think when I left here, I was about 99.8% sure that I was going to appeal. Uh, I think I had that decision almost made, but you're still holding or waiting towards the end after hearing that there were certain meetings happening in New York that maybe things would change or not. Um, but it basically came down to first with the personal situation we have going on at home. I don't know if it would have been the best for Kelly and I and our family to have to go through the stress of not playing in Spain and possibly jeopardizing the Ryder Cup. And two, the fact that I've always loved being able to go play in Spain and give back to the country that's given me so much. So it would have just felt wrong to not be at the Spanish Open and with the hopes that things are going to improve in the future as well. Uh, it basically became pretty clear that I wanted to appeal, fulfill my requirements as a European Tour member, and hopefully be be able to qualify or be considered for Ryder Cup next year. Okay, last one with Joy. Hey, John. Uh, as exhilarating this day is for you, you will be losing one of your team members, Kieran, uh, for the next season. Uh, can you just tell us what kind of, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you have not had a word with him as yet, but what, what will you tell him and 
will he find a friend in you for life uh, to get better? Uh, I'll tell him that no matter what, he's got his, my phone number. So if he wants or if he needs anything, any advice, all he needs to do is text me and, and I'll respond. You know, uh, We've shared a lot this year and whenever you compete as a team, that just doesn't go away. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't play his best. Uh, he's extremely talented and capable of a lot more than he showed this, this year. This is the, the crude reality of Live Golf. But if I'm not mistaken, he still has a chance. Live Golf promotions or international Promotion. series? Exactly. So he still has a chance of maybe making his way back. Uh, still no easy task, but he did do it once, so he might be able to do it again. Uh, advice would be <laughs> to get his head in the game because we got one more week. <laughs> and then maybe after that we can we can we can discuss future but he's got plenty of talent he just got engaged you know things in his personal life are going well and he's a heck of a person you know he's one of those people that's always happy always smiling always dancing whistling kind of annoying sometimes to be honest <laughs> uh especially with me and terrell and the, the group who are usually the grumpy bunch so uh it's uh and he's got a lot of potential and uh, i hope i hope he he gets to succeed on the game of golf in the future. And one last question. Again, talking about that shot on the 15th. The <laughs> drive. I did not think that that tee shot was going to be the, the thing to talk about. But does that show your kind of a Spanish Toro mentality that you never back down? I mean, will there be ever a, a chance that you would think of hitting a, a three wood or a iron of that tee? No. I mean, the driver is the best club on my bag, and I haven't hit any good all week. Uh, if you see my tee shots, great tee shot on 10, great tee shot on 11, great tee shot on 12, and 14. There is no chance in hell I'm not hitting driver on that hole. Win in of the left, aiming basically at the edge of the bunker. If I hit a good shot, it's in a good spot. If I over-release and goes dead straight, it has a chance to go at the pin, which is what happened. Uh, so, yeah, no, it was – you can use the extra adrenaline to maybe – get close, right? especially after seeing Sergio's three with how close he got, is when I realized if I hit this online, I didn't even have to hit it good. We're going to have a good look at an up and down for birdie. So, yeah, no, I never never thought of anything else, to be honest. John, congratulations on an incredible year. We're so happy for you, and we look forward to seeing you next week in Dallas. Thank you. Congratulations.